Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be looking at some defensive line. Because I suspect that you have trouble getting people off you. You get shot down constantly because people get on your sick. And in order to avoid this you're going to need your epic gamer skills. And put people just like this into your montage. Now calm down Maverick. That's for the end of the video. And to make sure you're motivated and stay in the video. Let's put the reversal in the bottom right. And let's look at what I have for you today. It's on the screen. You can read. We are not doing a high school PowerPoint presentation. I'm trying to stretch every last fiber of my being to make the video 10 minutes long. And you can navigate the progress bar. I do however advise you to watch the entire thing. Because there are some things that I want to slowly build up on. Because I don't want to completely flood you with information. Like a Dutch person that lives below sea level. So some things I won't cover here. I'll cover them in my energy guide that I made a while ago. And with some clips here I won't explain everything. I'll explain everything gradually throughout the video. So if you watch those clips back, if you are done with the video, you notice things that you didn't when you first saw the clip, you learned something today. I'm going to say good job. And if those words make you feel warm and fuzzy inside, then make sure to like, comment and subscribe because the video didn't suck complete balls. These videos take a lot of time and if the support is as amazing as it has been over the last weeks, months, even years, then I should have absolutely nothing to worry about. And lastly, of course, thank you to all my patrons. But enough of that, no one actually gives a shit. Let's go on to what you are actually here for. Just kidding, more boring talk. There are some small things I want to mention. It is easier to reverse in jets because everything happens at a higher speed and this really favors the experienced pilots. You can of course force higher speed reversals in props, you're just less likely and you're more of a sitting duck. Some fights are also just unwinnable. If you die, look at what you could have done different. Doesn't mean you would have won, but maybe it would have slightly increased the chances if the enemy had messed up. So let's rewind that kill and let's look at where we started. Because it's very important to avoid the situation altogether. And make sure that we don't have to deal with people straight on a 6. And let's look at what we did wrong there. Now it might look like I killed the MiG-21, I reversed them, I got an epic montage shot. So you must have done the right thing, right? No, you want to avoid getting those guys on your 6, especially that close, altogether. Reversing someone is your absolute last resort. It's not something you should rely on, despite it being pretty fun. But we're not here for fun, we're here to try and survive the match. So let's look at what we actually did. We were chasing the G91. You are slightly damaged, basically not a threat. And in us continuing to chase the G91, the MiG-21 can turn around, get on our 6. And if he had played it right, it would have played out a little bit like this. He starts shooting and we simply died. So let's look at what we could have done differently right there. And in reality, it is pretty damn simple. You just have to see it and just have to realize it. But if I visualize it with my epic Picasso skills, it should come pretty easily. Now, we are going to chase the MiG-21. Of course, if the G-91 now is not damaged, he will do the same thing to us as the MiG-21 would do. And this is why the inverse is also true. If you are together with a teammate, break off in separate directions. Do not run into the same direction because that guy is going to be on both you guys' six and that's what you don't want. So if we reverse the roles... If you were the MiG-21, you want to do exactly what he did. You want to split up with your teammate, make the attacker pick someone to attack, and then whoever doesn't get attacked has a ticket to actually attack the attacker. That's a mouthful, but you get what I'm saying. Defensive flying doesn't always have to be flashy. You want to avoid the situation altogether, and that's exactly how you do that. And the rest of this clip, well, too bad. That's for later. If you're inexperienced with positioning and target priority, I already made a pretty long video on that. So feel free to check that one out. It will be in the description. Now let's look at something very much overlooked but extremely important. Spacing and energy. I have this guy on my 6 and even though I turn a little bit better in this case, there's my turning circle. It's pretty sharp but the guy behind me, because he is behind me, needs to pull much less. And as you can tell here, the red line is basically straight but it's still going to intersect my blue line. Since he's behind me, he needs to pull less AOA, less turn to get a lead on us. So when he gets lead on us, we want to start going up or down or start maybe rolling around. We need to take some evasive action because if we don't do that, then he is simply just going to shoot us down. So you want to make sure that you are prepared that even though you outturn someone, he might actually end up getting the shot on you. And the opposite is also true. If you are being outturned, he is going to get a shot. So you want to make him react to you. He already has the point advantage. He's on your six. If you are going to be reacting to him, you are riding a very thin line of just simply dying. So you want to make him react to you. So you have a little bit of an advantage in your disadvantageous position. And you might think, why are you not explaining anything that's going on in the background? And I will in the next 15 minutes. So what I want you to do is watch this clip near the end of the video again. And see if the clip makes any more sense. Because if it does make more sense, you picked up on some things. I explained it well and we can all be happy. Well, all of us except for Pasturizel. 
So if someone gets on your six, you want to make sure you want to take action before he gets too close. Because once he gets within like 800 meters on dead on your six, it's going to be very hard to get him off you. So you want to avoid the situation altogether. One thing however, if someone is catching you and you don't want to waste too much time, you can go very slowly left to right. It's going to speed it up a little bit so he can get closer if you want to reverse him, if you are in a more maneuverable plane. But more often than not, you just want to do this a few times to just speed it up a little. So what can you do to get someone off your six? Well, if you have enough distance, you can do a head on. You can turn around, but keep in mind in this sharp turn here, you're going to lose a lot of energy. You can then build it up a little bit again with the purple lines. But in the time you are building it up again, he has been building it up this entire time because he has been flying straight. So you, you are going to go into a dogfight with a disadvantage. And if the enemy plane is much faster than you, uh, he might just be able to turn around and actually catch you. So be careful with that. Something else you can do is you can go 90 degrees. And this is going to speed it up. It's going to bring him closer to you. And once he reaches you, you're going to be a little bit like this. He's going to go more sideways on you. And you can turn into him. And turning into someone is going to give him the hardest shot possible. Bonus point if you use the ground. But more of that a little bit later here. So he is going to come in from the side here. And you are able to turn into him. Run away. Go towards a teammate. Whatever you want to do. If you are faster, just run. But sometimes it's better to just start a dogfight. And because you are going to turn left before he starts turning, you are going to bleed a little bit of speed. And it's going to make it so that you are probably going to get the first shot. Now, if the enemy is paying attention, you are going to burn a lot of energy with it with this maneuver right here. And you might actually end up stalling your ass out. But it depends on what the enemy does. You always want to look at what your enemy is doing. Don't just treat this like a flowchart. And now we're going to use some ground here. And let me use my drawing skills. Heal some terrain. And because we are in the Netherlands. Let, let's add a massive hill. There we go. An absolute unit of a mountain. Now if you go underneath him. You're going to use the terrain. And if he tries to get a shot on you. He will lead. But he won't be able to actually complete his loop. So he's going to end up turning into the ground. So he has no choice but to break off. Or he can do whatever this guy was doing. And try really really hard to get a shot off. And then notice a little bit too late. That the ground starts getting bigger. At a very rapid rate. Which is probably why the right boulders call this an airplane. And not a tree plane. And I hope that woke you up a little bit. Because I know it's very enticing to just fall asleep right now. But trust me. We are just getting to the battle stuff. And once he breaks off. You are actually able to pull up into him. And it's going to be the same deal as with the previous dogfight. Because he's going to be turning up. And you are underneath him. Being underneath someone is going to give you an advantage in terms of dogfighting. But I will explain that. In a video about dogfighting itself. Because I don't want to put too much emphasis on it right here. And just to clear it up before I confuse anyone. I mean being below someone with the same energy state. If you are below someone by like 200 meters and you're going slower. Because he climbed higher than you. That's not an advantage. You are boned. So you better start defensive flying. And talking about that. Something that's also very overlooked very often is actual speed. So you want to be slower than the guy you're trying to reverse. Or faster than the guy you're trying to run away from. Say this is my rolling scissor pattern. This guy is riding my ass and I'm going to go left to right in this manner. If the guy behind me is faster than me, he needs to do much tighter turns to keep up with this. But if he's slower than me, he needs to do much less turning to keep up with me. And because you are going faster, you're making a lot more horizontal ground. And you don't want that because if you take too much ground horizontally, you are going to overshoot. So if you are going faster, you need to cover more ground in the other axis, which means you have to turn more. So now if you get a guy on your 6 that's slower than you, it's going to be much more difficult to reverse him. If he is slower than you in a more maneuverable plane, do not attempt the reversal. If he's slower than you in a less maneuverable plane, you can start dogfighting him. And if he's faster than you in a more maneuverable plane, you need to shed more speed and try to get that first shot off. If you miss it, you are probably boned. But if you're just going to fly straight and get him... Even closer on you, you are 100% going to die. If he also finds his throttle key in this entire engagement and he's going to slow down behind you, you are screwed. Like there is very little you can do in that situation, but it's about avoiding the situation altogether. And let me show you an example. The ME410 is in no way, shape or form going to outturn the Spitfire LF Mark 9. But I'm going much slower than him. He's diving on us. I'm using the ground and I'm going to turn up and over. And because he's going much faster than us... Right here, because he's going much faster and his loop is going to be completed sooner. Even though his loop is much tighter, because we are going slower, he's going to end up flying in front of us. This is not ideal and this is not something you should strive for. But slowing down when you are in a less maneuverable plane is a good thing. 
slowing down in the more maneuverable plane is a bad idea because you out turn them anyway all you have to do is simply dodge his guns and you are going to be completely golden and here we are against the mig 21 sps now we bleed about the same amount of energy the thing is he turns much better than us and he also has much more aoa so his nose will lead much more than us so i'm gonna make him turn into directions and i'm gonna make as many maneuvers as possible while keeping him mostly straight, I'm going to lose as much speed as possible. I drop my throttle and can tell that the second I do that, he's going to creep forward. He's going to start overshooting. He also drops his throttle. He's about to go slower than us here. And we are going to try and get the shot in. Guns are just a bit too low. He's losing speed. And look how quickly he reverses us again. At this point, he is slower than us in a more maneuverable plane. So I leave. I am not taking that fight. So I will just leave. And a message to all MiG-21 pilots. Turning makes you very slow. Yeah, who would have thought? I will have more examples of this later, but I want to intertwine this with another topic. And it's something you've been dreading and probably hoped that wasn't going to return in this one. But tough luck, here it is. Know your planes, people. It's going to be very important here. Can you roll? Can you pull? Can you go up? Can you simply just outrun him and ignore the guy on the 6? Because the absolute easiest way of defensive flying is simply running away from him. Don't start trying to reverse A6Ms in your P-51D30. It is not going to happen. Now here's a matchup for you. We have a P-38K at altitude and we are in the K-4. Now the K-4 has the advantage in terms of high speed turn, high speed roll and just straight line speed. And I can use all of this to my advantage to really easily equalize the energy. And if you don't know what equalizing is, I have an energy guide part 3. It will be at about 12 minutes 40 and you can watch there for a little bit more of an in-depth explanation. But essentially what it is, it is going over his straight line speed. To make sure that he is losing some energy until we are pretty close to each other. So what am I doing right now? It's simply just equalizing the energy and making sure that he is not going too fast. Because if he's going too fast, he's just going to boom and zoom me forever. I also want to make sure that I won't be going too slow. Because if I go too slow in front of him, it doesn't matter what inputs I have. He is just going to gun me down and I don't want that. So I'm going to let him dive on me once more. I'm going to make him get a little bit closer here. He's noticing what I'm doing and he breaks off. I then just go straight to bait him back into us. He does exactly what we planned. And then we start diving a little bit. I want to keep him above his straight line speed as long as possible. And the higher he goes over that, the more speed he will lose. Now we will go aggressive for a little bit. Now this is very ambitious. This is not so much to get, get the kill in. This is to get him to lose as much speed as possible. So we shoot a little bit. We miss. We miss again. We shoot a little bit too low again. We miss again. We don't have the speed to do this. But this wasn't necessarily to kill him. If we had killed him, that'd be fantastic. But now we have him roped in. Now we have him pretty slow. And because my plane picks up enough speed, we can start flying defensively. And this is what you're here for. And I'm going to pause it yet again. Because it's finally getting a little bit interesting. Now let's get all this trash off the screen. And let's look at what you're here for. My absolute brilliance when it comes to drawing planes. So we have a blue 109 and a red P38 and it will be a little bit cluttered they will be overlapped on each other to show you good positions to be and now even though the P38 might compress it might not roll as well as you but just rolling in place is not going to get you anywhere and you see this all the time you need to move in more direction than one otherwise you're going to end up like that massive fireball so what do you want to do you want to make it so that he doesn't have to do only one thing to nose up into you so if you stay directly above him he all he has to do is just pull on his elevator and he's going to gun you down very easily. Now if you stay below him depending on the plane you might get away with it. But then you have to know your plane. For the P38 it might work. Mix 17 with his flaps down it will work. But if you face something like a Spitfire or you face something that can actually neck G very well. You don't want to be there. So ideally what you want to do is stay next to him. Bonus points if you can stay next to him and underneath him at the same time. Because now first he has to roll over. Then he has to pull on his elevator. And now he's getting a shot. But that means that you're not moving in the meantime. You can react to what he is doing. And in the time it takes him to roll up over. You can just pitch up and get out of his guns. And you can do this dance all day long. Because look where we are right now. We are already on his wingtip. And he still has to roll over all the way. So we can just keep rolling onto the left now. As long as we read what he is doing. Because if he plays it right. He's going to predict where we are going. Instead of going where we are. And you can make this as complicated as you want. This is going to take some experience. But the baseline is try to stay in a position where he won't be able to just pull, press one key and pull up into you. But wait, I have an absolutely amazing NFT for you. It's a summary of where you want to be. And if you subscribe right now, I'll add in a second one for free. 
what an absolute steal but in all seriousness what are you looking at here other than an absolute classic masterpiece we're looking at where you want and don't want to be so we have the black diamond you want to stay outside of that then you have the orange box you want to get to the sides as quickly as i can yellow is a little bit better yellow is slightly better as mostly negative elevator authority is a lot lower so it's not as dangerous as being on top but you still want to move to the side and then the green box it's all right pretty good but you're better over the blue green or blue difference isn't too massive but blue is definitely better here but don't put too much emphasis on that if you're in one of those do not try to get to the other one just try to stay beyond the wingtips and you will be golden a little bit of a bonus not too important but sometimes it will help you it's a good baseline to have you're now in a good position what side do you want to roll you can roll to the right or to the left and it will indicate you what it looks like rolling to the right when you out roll him means you're just going to keep out rolling him and you're staying on your wingtip if you roll to the left you're going to start rolling back into him so you do want to be careful of that if you out roll him try to out roll him if you roll worse than him you can try to pull into him but at the end of the day, just try to make a cross with both your planes. Try to be perpendicular in your wings and you should be complete and golden. Just be careful if he's predicting your flight path and do not pull into it. At the end of the day, you do want to be careful. It's still defensive flying. You're not suddenly on the offensive. You're trying to not get shot down. Now I want you to look at my smoke. Look at his contrails and look at my directions. I'm trying to roll into the same direction. It's a smooth roll. I see that he's starting to pull lead. He has some distance on us. And because he has distance on us, he needs to pull less into those directions. Because he's cutting my flight pad off with his guns. Now this is critical. I'm in his skill box. I need to get below it. And I see him roll. So I roll the other direction. I see his nose and I'm going to pull to his wingtip again. And I do it just in time, because if it was 0.1 second later, he would have blasted my wing off right there. Luckily he doesn't, he's going faster than us. But he's not going fast enough to actually get away from us, so we end up pitching up to him. And because the K4 has a little bit better stall control, and I mean that in terms of getting stall shots, the P38K is better in the stall, it is better in energy fighting in this manner. But luckily we have better style control and we managed to put the nose on him. Now if you miss that one, we try to repeat, but we will end up eventually running out of energy. Now let's look at another example. This time we are going to be looking at the F-104G for Germany and the JAB. And the JAB basically outperforms us in every metric that's important here. He is faster than us and he's just much more maneuverable. And something I see many people do is just fly away from this guy and try to outrun him. It's not happening. He is clearly catching us. So what do we want to do? I want to use the fact that he is faster than us. So I want to lure him in just a little bit extra. And I'm then just going to 0% throttle and try to go as slow as humanly possible. I'm going Mac 0.85 and then he breaks the Mac cloud, which means that he is much faster than us. And because of that, he's going to end up overshooting. Because of the roll rate, we are able to stay outside of his guns. We then throttle back up the second he overshoots because we want to have some energy to pull the shot in. He then turns into the wrong direction and we are able to shoot him down. Keep in mind, it is risky, but flying away from him and waiting for him to catch us isn't going to help anyone either. You're better off trying to go for an all-in maneuver that might kill him if he's bad or if he messes up, other than just staying in front of him and eventually dying. And to convey this point, I'm going to sit on the A5C. This time we are the attacker and I'm going to show you how easy it is if the enemy just stays in front of you. If he's going faster than you. We are much less maneuverable. We have a little bit of a better roll rate. All this guy needs to do is pull in one direction. And he will start mobbing on us. And he is just simply gone. What does this guy do? He stays in front of my nose. He rolls around my nose. And he doesn't try to slow down. And because of this I can simply keep rolling on a 6. And this shows both of the last topics. It shows not knowing your plane. Because he could have just turned in a single direction. And I never would have hit him. Look at his turn rate difference. There is nothing I can do. And then I'm also a little bit slower than him. So I can just stay on his 6. If you are slower than someone. And the other guy is not attempting to turn with you. If the other guy is simply trying to run away from you. What are you going to do? What are you going to do as the defender. If you are simply going to roll in front of your enemy. Eventually he is going to hit you. It doesn't matter if you are more maneuverable. It doesn't matter if you are in the better plane. It doesn't matter if you are the better pilot. If you are going to dance in front of the enemy. Eventually he is going to get a shot. And he's only going to need one. And then you die. All this guy needed to do was turn in one direction. Or just slow down more than me. But he flew in such a manner. That I ended up just sitting on a 6. Until he eventually died. And then to wrap up the topic. 
let's look at an actual advantage position here. We have a Mirage F1C on us. We are much more maneuverable. He is a little bit faster than us in the long run. But in the actual fight, in a close range fight, there is absolutely nothing he can really do to us. You do want to be careful with slowing down, however, when there are missiles involved. Especially if you don't have flares. Luckily, we do have some. Look at what the missile is doing. Look if the missile is going for your flares. And just look... If you actually need flash, if you need to drop throttle, and if you end up going too slow, if you drop too much speed, it doesn't really matter what you do because you can't really dodge the missile. If you are too slow, the heat signature doesn't really move, and sometimes your flash might not work. So try to not slow down too much. Right here, I'm trying to get some spacing. I'm trying to get all the topics in here. It's a 2v1. I just wait for my teammate to clean up one of them. I turn inside of the F1C. I turn much better than him. So I just turn inside of his turning circle. I get out of his guns. And then I just turn back in. Now how do you do this? And unfortunately it's the same deal as in the intro clip. Which we have finally reached again. And I'm sorry to tell you. But it's simply just a lot of experience. You need to throw everything together. And you also need to get lucky. Because the enemy on your 6 just has the advantage. Get this through your skull. He has the advantage and he needs to mess up. He could have broken off right there and I never would have gotten the shot. Instead, because I'm going slightly slower, he's going to fly right in our guns. And just to drive it home once more, look at this. If he was going slightly slower, where do you think I would have been? I would have been in front of his nose. We intersected each other perfectly. If I was going faster, it would have been the other way around. And now to really show this to you and to really drive it home, I'm going to show two of the exact same patterns, just mirrored. And the only thing different will be the speed they are going through it. Same turn rate, same distance, same everything, just a different speed. So let's look at it. We have the same starting point. Blue and red are going the same speed right now. So we are going to reach the intersection at the same time. No one is getting shots on. You might ram, we might dodge. And now blue is going to start slowing down. So it's going to take blue longer to complete the next kind of loopy thing and you can tell red is a little bit in front blue is going to start reaching the turn red is already at the intersection blue is now looking at it he gets a shot blue is now still going slower red is about to complete the loop again blue is going to get the shot for the second time and every time this happens the shot for blue gets easier red notices this he starts slowing down blue is going faster now they reach just before the intersection at about the same time Blue is faster at this point and passes in front of red. And I can do this all day long but I think it's starting to be pretty clear here. This is all I can do for you for now. If you can do something for me as well in terms of liking, subbing and commenting if you have any questions. That'd be great. I'll try to answer everything I can down below. And at the end of the day it's going to take a lot of time, effort and just knowledge. It's war thunder and just like the game even your skill level needs to be grinded out completely. It's going to take a lot of time but you should be used to that by now.